Welcome to A Growing Concern. We're going to take another swing at uh, saving the Postal Service tonight. We've discussed this in the past, and uh, I've, I always found it very illuminating to find out all the great things that the Post Ser Postal Service does. And uh, unfortunately, it may not be able to continue to do so because of some of the, uh, the acts of Congress and the different things that move towards privatizing it. Yesterday, there was a rally, and some folks got arrested. Ten folks got arrested, and I have one of the people that got arrested here with me tonight, Jamie Partridge, who's a retired letter carrier. That's right. And that was here in Portland? Oh, you mean I was letter carrier here in here Portland? Here in Portland? Oh, yeah. Okay. Inner Northeast Portland. Mm -hmm. King neighborhood, Woodlawn neighborhood. All right. So you were just, you know, like almost like a neighborhood watch, is what I understand what Lori was saying when she was talking, that, that uh, people just, you know, they get to know their letter carrier, and, and you know, it's, it's a lot different than someone like the like some, the, uh, the UPS that shows up once in a while. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different thing. Every house, every day. I was uh, on the same route for 15 years and then another route for six years. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I saw kids grow, grow up, up you know, leave home, get married. Mm -hmm. Saw people grow old and die and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. And so since, since the Postal Service is under, uh, under an attack right now towards privatization, as is so many things, uh, there was a rally held, and, and what, was, what was the gist of that rally? Well, it was organized by Occupy Portland, uh, but involved a lot of, lot of people from the community, uh, and uh, some of us retirees uh, got involved, and we're trying to raise the level of struggle. We're trying to raise the heat on the, the powers that are making decisions about the Postal Service because the Postal Service is being driven off a cliff. It's about mm -hmm. to be, it's about to have huge closures and cuts um, led by the Postmaster General, but uh, aided and embedded by Congress. And uh, we felt that it was important not just to rally and, and march, but to actually occupy the post office. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I watched the news last night at 11, and all channels had about 20 seconds of it, and that's about it. Has that been your typical response with the corporate media, that they don't really get into these, these issues very deep? That's true, yeah. And, and, the, and the corporate media continues to put out the disinformation that it's the Internet that's killing the Postal Service, it's competition from the private sector that's killing the Postal Service, it's a bloated uh, workforce, uh, overpaid mm -hmm. union workers that's, that's uh, causing the Postal Service to decline, when in fact it's actually Congress itself that created the problem, problem in, in 2006 by mandating that the Postal Service pre-fund retiree health benefits 75 years in advance, Insane. within 10 years. So the 10% of the postal budget goes to pre-funding retiree health benefits for people who not only don't work for the Postal Service yet, they're not even born yet. <laughs> born no yet. other agency even does any pre-funding of, of retiree health benefits, and, and you know most, most big corporations don't do it. And it, it's, it was basically a poison pill that was uh, used to, to bleed, to milk the Postal Service uh, to use that money in the, into, into the general fund. And at the time, the Postal Service was uh, highly profitable, and, um, but the recession hit, and, and then uh, the Postal Service started going into debt. Without that pre-funding requirement, Postal Service would be in the black. No and question. The, and the Postal Service, according to some folks that were on their program a while back, Postal Service did, does not get any government money. It's, it's all... Uh, receipts or whatever, however it's... it's uh, yeah, that's another, that's another myth that, that a lot of people don't understand, that there's no taxpayer money involved with the Postal Service anymore. It, it transitioned uh, during the 70s and 80s to become, to become fully uh, postage funded. funded. And right. so this money that's being squirreled away in these uh, health the Health Benefits Fund and, the, and the, the pensions, which are also overfunded, there, there's a, a couple of studies that by, off, by the Office of Inspector General and by the Postal Regulatory Commission that show that there's like 75 to 80 billion dollars surplus in the pension fund. And this is all paid for by rate, by postage, not taxpayer dollars, but it's being used because it's now into the federal employees' mm -hmm. funds. It's being, it's being used to, to uh, either prosecute the war in Afghanistan or lower the deficit or whatever it is that they use it for. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Postal Service doesn't have access to its own funds, and uh, Congress or the President has to make the fix. They haven't done it yet. Haven't done it yet. Well, you know, this is an election year, so it's not going to happen right now. Let's just hope that it'll keep things tamped down so they won't make any, any 
terrible decisions. Well, our, our, our approach is Congress is stuck on stupid. You know, we've collected a million signatures on petitions to try to get them to do the right thing. Meanwhile, the Postmaster General is not waiting. You know, he's not oh. waiting for the Congress or President to fix this, this thing. He's taking his marching orders from the privatizers, and he's, he's going to close half the pro mail processing plants. He's going to cut hours 25 to 75 percent in half the post offices. He's going to be he's going to set up new delivery standards so that mail will be delayed, you know, one two days. There won't be any more over overnight first class mail. You know, putting your putting your letter in the in the box on uh, on Thursday and it getting delivered in in Portland the next day. That, that no happens that. a lot. That will go out the window, and uh, tens of thousands of jobs will be eliminated. So that have huge impact on communities. You know, and that, that's starting this summer. So uh, you know, if we don't if we don't push back and resist, that's what's going to happen. Well, well, we'll definitely try to get folks out there in TV land to, to uh, lend, lend a shoulder to this uh, grindstone that we're up against. But I'm glad you mentioned the fact that the that uh, everybody thinks it's all because of emails. Because I was behind with my camera over her head of that yeah, woman that's inter interviewing you mm -hmm. for the corporate for corporate media, yeah. and she came at you, at you twice with that. She didn't like your first answer, then she hit it, said it again, and uh, both times you you parried it quite effectively and told her exactly what is going on. And uh, I guess after two times she gave up because I think she concluded the uh, the uh, interview at that point. But that is what they played on the news. They let they did play your response. I think it was on the second time. Do you remember? Uh -huh. remember do, you, do I remember what, what I said? What your response was there? Um, she says, "Oh, but what an email! People aren't using it anymore." She might have asked me if I when was the last time I mailed a letter, and of course I informed her that I had was mailed that a day, letter right. that day, and, and that all of us had, as part of this action, we mailed a postcard to the postmaster general, mm -hmm. saying uh, that huh. you will only drive the postal service into a death spiral with this uh, with your with your plans and. Uh, the fact is that the internet has had an impact on uh, first-class mail. There's some, you know, business-to-business -business mail that is now, you know, uh, internet, electronic funds transfer, bill paying, paying online. Um, but that's only that's only reduced the volume by about 20 percent in the last 10 years, and the postal service has adapted. Uh, it did. It has reduced the workforce from 800,000 to 600,000 in that time. Um, but what's really, you know, the, it. Since 2006, it's really the, the you know this impact of this pre-funding mandate is really what's killing the postal service. And the the postal service was highly profitable in 2006 uh, before this mandate, and the internet had been around for 10 years. You know, so mm -hmm. the postal service has been able to adapt over time, and it's certainly going to have to develop new products and services and new ways of functioning. And that's already happening. The, po the internet has actually created a new, a new business for uh, the Postal Service, which is that people buy, order stuff online. They used to go into stores and pick up, pick up yeah, the package themselves. that's what themselves. I was going to say next. Yeah. So they order stuff online, and who delivers it? Mm -hmm. The Postal Service. Um, so and there's more, it's more than 45 cents to deliver a package, usually, than it is. Uh, so there must, some of that 20% must be being made up. Sure, sure. Yeah, and then and then of course we have all kinds of ideas for the new things that the postal service can do to uh, expand. I mean, but we can get into that one. We can get into that later. Yeah. And we did yeah. with these folks that uh, I, th I think you're the ones that set it up for us last time. There was three people here, and they did a great job. And uh, well, you know, we've talked a little bit about this, uh, some of the issues involved. But uh, we'll get into the uh, uh, the first clip from the rally, which is about four, 13 and some odd minutes. It's uh, four speakers. Uh, one was the was uh, Latia, I believe, was Latia. from, from uh, uh, Occupy St. John's, and then there was a woman who was speaking from the uh, postal postal union, a woman that was speaking from, uh, well, a couple other speakers. Oh, oh Marco Mejia from the uh, Jobs with Justice. So it's a whole range of people that 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 showed up and spoke about uh, why they are doing this. This, uh, this rally. And then when we get done with that, we'll come back and talk some more, and then we'll play some of the footage of the march and then the, the, mo the, the movement into the university uh, post, post office there, where the eventually, after a couple hours, a cop finally grudgingly had to arrest people. They didn't want to do it. But, uh, you know, this is the first time I've ever been on an action where instead of trying to shut something down, you guys were trying to keep it open and not allow them to close. And so, as you say, you've been getting phone calls from all over the country for people interested in, 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 in this type of action. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll uh, get this on the Internet as well and folks can check, that out, check it out there. But we'll be back in about 14 minutes or so.
Benjamin Franklin was the very first Postmaster General. And the Postal Service is a key component in what gave us our independence from Britain. It, they used it to communicate. It united the colonies. It is so important to the people and how we communicate not only with our communities, but with our government. And it's under attack, and I'm sure Benjamin Franklin, Paul Revere, all those guys we learned about would be disgusted. It's really gross. It's, our freedom of speech came from our United States Postal Service. That's how we had newspapers talking about issues that we cared about. That's how people um, back in the colonies were able to know what was going on. Well, it wasn't that big of a continent at the time, but way over where they thought was quite a distance. Another thing that happened that was very inspiring with our Postal Service is in 1970, there was a wildcat strike led by the United States Postal Service workers. And they faced the National Guard. So I don't know if any of you are familiar with what Occupy Portland has done, but we, a while back, organized to help some workers called ILWU in their struggle with EGT. And we were supposed to be going up against the Coast Guard. And I know a lot of us organizers and planners at that time drew inspiration from the postal workers' strike because they were able to face the National Guard and they succeeded in what they wanted, which was decent pay and union recognition. So that was something that was kind of a driving force to keep me going. And now it's sad, but at the same time, I'm glad that I can help the Postal Service because they've done so much for this country and it's time that they're not under attack anymore. It's, <laughs> It's so absurd. When you look at the current situation, um, we're looking at since 96, Alex has tried to privatize the Postal Service. They worked 10 years to get the Postal Service in the situation it's at. In 2006, they passed a pre-funding mandate. And what that did, yeah, boo indeed. What that did was make them take 5.5 billion every year and put it in a fund for people who aren't even alive yet. We're talking about 75 years of pre-funding in advance, 75 years in advance for this pre-funding mandate. That's what it did. Of course that's going to cause financial problems. We're talking about billions of dollars. Right now that account has $44 billion in it. $44 billion. And they are saying that by cutting jobs and hours, they're going to help the financial situation and they're not going to get rid of that mandate at all? Someone tell me how that makes sense. No, it doesn't. Well, that account, um, the funds in that account are, are very, uh, where are they? You know, there's no accountability, there's no transparency. <laughs> well, you know, we are at war, but um, it's a shame because by far, the media has not put out the reason why the UPS, USPS is in a financial situation that it is, and it's because of this pre-funding mandate. It is something that Congress could fix overnight by getting rid of the pre-funding mandate. And that instead, they're trying to take away 200,000 good paying jobs. Those are middle class union jobs that they just want to throw out the door for absolutely no reason. It is unnecessary. All of these cuts. All these closures are unnecessary. We're talking about losing 50% of all of our processing centers for the US, um, USPS. 50%. And 50% of all post offices are going to face a reduction of hours. That impact is going to be huge on the middle class. And it's completely unnecessary. So Saturday delivery alone, we're talking about 80,000 jobs. And, and what does Congress and Alex and the Postmaster General keep pushing down our throats through the media? That it's necessary. We need to do this to save the postal system. We need to do this in order to keep USPS alive. We're not buying it. We know why they're doing it. Alex? Who belongs to Alex? UPS and FedEx. Yeah. And since this pre-funding mandate, their profits have increased, so they've already benefited from this. And if they can take the United States Postal Service and drive it even further into a death spiral, it's going to make it so much easier for it to be privatized. Are you, are you guys okay with that? Are you okay with what Alex has planned? No closures, no cuts. No closures, no cuts. No closures, no cuts. U.S. P.S. Not wrong. There be problems. So I'm going to start with a little
little story. Back in December, Monday, December 19th, 23 communities across Oregon occupied their post offices. Woo! I'm not talking a little rally. Communities in Western Lane County, population 180, Deadwood, Oregon turned out 164 people for their rally. The reason why the post office is so central to these communities is not just about getting mail. It's about the heart of the community. Many of these rural communities facing closure, the post office is the only publicly accessible building in those communities. Can you imagine losing that? People organize at these post offices in response to natural disasters. They organize at these post offices when someone needs medical treatment and the ambulance can't figure out where their house is. So closing these post offices is really erasing these small towns off the map. That's why these rural communities are fighting back. As many of you probably heard, they announced that the initial plan for the closures is halted. People are sighing a sigh of relief because now we're supposedly only facing our cuts. But as all of you have probably heard by now, 129 rural post offices are facing closure within the next two years. We went from 41 to 129. What I'm really saying here is Portland is joining those 23 communities who occupied their post office. So thank you for joining us. And right now our folks are organizing. Prior to this announcement that the closures were stopped, folks were planning their last direct actions to force the doors of their post offices to stay open. They were talking about the one percenters, the self-proclaimed one percenters of these small towns, were talking about lodging their logging equipment in the doors so they could not close their post office. And these folks, these folks are not quitting. We have been on conferences called, we're gonna have 129 communities standing up, fighting back, saying no, you will not take our post offices. You will not take our community infrastructure. We have Patty, who is from the United Postal Workers Union, who's here to talk, and uh, please welcome her. Hi everybody, I'm with the American Postal Workers Union, the Portland local here, local 128. And um, I'm so glad that all of you have come out today because it's really important to all of us. Many of our people can't get away from their jobs because of staffing. Um, they're needed. They can't get time off to be here at some of these rallies at these times. So I really want to appreciate all of you and let you know that we thank you very much for being um, supportive of us and standing, us, standing with us very strong in, in solidarity. Um, the Federal Times recently posted that the Postal Service is expected to cut the 5,000 jobs with consolidations and closures over the next three months. By 2014, the expected job loss is 28,000. That's not far away. Not only are processing plants and rural post offices under attack, but as we speak, city stations here in Portland have been put on the chopping block as well. Reducing traditional eight hour a day, five week or five day a week jobs for postal workers in the plants and the city stations here in Portland is not only a hardship on those workers, but a hardship on those neighborhoods, post offices as well. These clerks in the stations are practically being forced to take these cuts in hours or be a reassigned elsewhere and that elsewhere is questionable. These workers are just like everyone else with bills to pay and mouths to feed. But those in Congress and the Postmaster don't seem to give a damn. They seem to be only concerned with service, cuts in service and cuts in jobs, when the real problem is staring them right in the face and that is the pre-funding. The pre-funding of future retiree health benefits, so we need to stop that and the post office would survive. And there's no doubt about that. Stop the pre-funding and we can continue to serve the American public. 
Also, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, one in five people in the U.S. do not have computers or internet service. 35% of low-income families and elderly do not have internet access. They rely on the postal service for their needs. Not only do they rely on the postal service, but our troops and families of the military rely on the postal service. Students rely on the postal service. Small businesses rely on the postal service. And we all rely on the postal service in one way or another. The postal service works because it serves all of us, no matter your income, no matter your status. The role of the postal service is to give service to all, not to the shareholders and not to big business. We, the people, own the postal service. Don't let private companies take it away, take it away from you, and don't let the postmaster general, under the guise of transforming the service into a business model, take it away from you, and don't let Congress legislate it away from you. This is the people's postal service. Thank you. Is everyone fired up for today's event? There we go, excellent. Uh, you all know Just With Justice has been fighting these cuts and this war on the working people forever. Well, 21 years. <laughs> but all of us have been doing that and we're here standing together and it's great to see all of us doing what we need to do. Doing the solidarity work with everyone, with all the workers and today with the postal service uh, and the workers. It is outrageous that, that this uh, at this moment that we are facing big, big cuts in everything. Big cuts to education, big cuts to the postal service, to the safety net programs that, that is the last thing that we and many people in the community have are being cut. But the ones that have the wealthy, that have most of the money, that own pretty much everything in this country, they are the ones that have cuts, but in tax payments, right? They are the ones that get our money when, when the banks are going bankrupt because they say they're bankrupt, right? And they take our money to bail out the banks. Isn't it bad? See, when our people are losing their homes every day, our families are losing their jobs. Anyway, so we are going to create jobs today, right? Not cut jobs. And what they're doing is cutting jobs that already exist. And they're talking about job creation and job creation bills, and they're going to go on the political campaign saying that they're going to create jobs. This is their opportunity to say no to these cuts and, and to continue having these, these jobs. We need a, a, a postmaster that really defends the postal service and their workers. Is that right? So we're going to ask them, and that's why we have those postcards there that we're going to deliver. We're going to ask, in a very nice way, the people here at the Postal Service to tell them and to deliver these postcards that we're going to give and tell them what we are asking them, asking him to do. No so, cuts! No cuts! Exactly, so no cuts, right? No cuts! No closures! No cuts! No closures! No cuts! No closures! All right, welcome back. A lot of good information, some of the stuff we touched on, hopefully some of it expanded on what we touched upon. Before we get too much further, uh, we, we want to get that up there. And uh, what's, what's the purpose of this local contact we were talking about there? Well, Jimmy? that's our the Letter Carriers Union. And we a lot of the um, work that we've been doing in educating the public about what's happening with the Postal Service has been organized out of the Letter Carriers Union. We have a... Uh, an organizing committee, which is basically a speakers bureau, among other things, and we'd like to get out into the community and talk uh, to whatever size group you have. We've been talking. We've talked to about 70 different neighborhood associations, business, oh, good. Yeah. business uh, associations, uh, unions, uh, churches, different kinds students, of students, maybe student groups. Yeah. Yeah. And so, call that number and uh, ask us to come out and speak to your group. Right. Because there's really a lot of disinformation out there, misinformation about the Postal Service and 
People think it's a dying institution. It's not. It's being killed by Congress. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that brings up a good point. You mentioned something we can talk about later. And, you know, I was really surprised at some of the ideas. I wish I could remember the folks' names that were here before. But uh, they come up with ideas where the post office could be expanding services rather than and decimating them. And what, what were some of those? Well, the, uh, in a lot of countries, the post office provides banking services for small depositors. And actually, in the United States, we had a postal bank up until 1967. Wow. Um, and they, in, you know, in this day, of, in day and age where people don't trust the big banks for good reason, um, and a lot of people, uh, a lot of towns don't have banks, you know, or, you know, access to the uh, consumer banks, a post office would be a great place. And, and you know, they have a, a Japan, other places they have postal banking. Uh, another opportunity, another thing is to, to make post offices uh, one-stop uh, government, um, you know, where you could get, uh, you could take care of your motor vehicle license renewal, you could get your hunting license, you could, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, take care of, uh, what, different, different, different kinds of uh, whatever, uh, government op, uh, you know business then mm, state yeah. or federal yeah sure and um, another thing we used to have in the post offices were, were uh, copy machines you know people could could uh, use a copy machine or uh, now um, internet access a lot of towns there isn't a library there isn't a place where you can get that's a inter huge one internet access and every every post office has internet access um, you know, we should uh, we should be able to have uh, you know computer terminals in in, mm -hmm. in post office lobbies that people can use. There's um, notary services. We could have check cashing services. We could have. Um, um, well, one of the things that we were thinking there are different things we could deliver that we're not delivering now. For example, um, you know, UPS, FedEx, they can deliver beer and wine. We're not allowed to do that. We could do that. Um, Mm -hmm. We could do pick up a delivery for local businesses. You know, you could within the internet age, you can you know the, you can get we can get text messages or whatever uh, from a local business saying come by and pick up so and so's whatever and and deliver that day. And this is what it'd be easy enough for the post office to do that contract with local businesses. Even and one of the things that we do now, um, but only on a um, voluntary basis, and usually we get. Uh, uh, harassed by management for doing it is looking in on the frail and elderly you know folks that uh, the only person they see every day is the, the postal carrier that comes by and um, the high point of their day <laughs> yeah well and a lot of times uh, we you know if if the uh, uh, mrs jones who usually comes to the door to get her mail doesn't come you know or we notice that the that the that the mail has is there from yesterday in mm -hmm. the, in the box you know, we'll we'll uh, knock on the door. We'll uh, you know alert a neighbor, and and uh, we could we could have a service. You know, where where uh, people could contract with the postal service to look in on their mm -hmm. elderly you know mother in the next town, and uh, you know text you a mes message every day that your mom's okay. Sure. Um, those are the kinds of things the postal service could do, and. Um, you know, we're trying to we're coming up with all new new and different mm -hmm. ideas all the time. Uh, it's it would be a it would be a criminal to dismantle this huge infrastructure. I mean, we go to every address every day, you know, from the outback in Alaska to the bottom of the Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. and we've got uh, the largest f fleet of vehicles, two hundred thousand vehicles, um, you know, thirty five thousand post offices. It. it it would be a sh it would be a shame a shame to uh, allow it to be dismantled by the uh, mm -hmm. the folks who want to shrink it and uh, break it up and sell off the profitable por portions you know which is basically the the, the downtown uh, business and the, and the su suburbs and leave the uh, rural and the low income neighborhoods to twist in the wind and those are the ones that really need it the most sure yeah because they don't have any any alternatives there right. you know it strikes me that a, a town is a town because it has a post office not because it has a library you know and there's a lot of towns that may not have a library but they have a post office and you know there could be like you know you mentioned the uh the uh te the technical labs the uh the computer labs yeah that would be huge for people and people that, don't, that maybe they don't even have a whole lot of availability of of the internet that would, that would be huge. And another thing I was thinking about, and then I realized that the folks that were on before talked about it, is uh, uh, trying to bring the, the, uh, all these, what did you say, 35,000 vehicles or something into the oh. 21st century or oh, something 200, like that? 200,000. 200,000? Yeah. And start, and start utilizing electrical or, or different, different kinds of, uh, of uh, transportation. That would make a big difference in, in the climate, the, uh, you know, the changing climate. 
Well, right right now, the the uh, the whole setting up the grid for electrical vehicles and the charging stations and all that, it's not in place because there are not, aren't enough electrical vehicles on the road. Well, well, you know, it's like the chicken and the egg. The chicken and the egg. And, but if the postal service, did, you know. Got had a, the, the had a charging station. Got the money back that is owed from the surplus. They could make the investment in new electrical vehicles and and jumpstart that whole process in every city and every mm -hmm. town in this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that would that would be huge. And and, and uh, you, you got to uh, prime the pump in order to get that going. And and uh, and now they're coming out with wholly electrical vehicles. So it's it's slow, but it's moving in that direction. Well, and the postal service doesn't need. Uh, you know, vehicles that can go 300 miles or they can, that go, need to go 60 miles an hour. That's not the kind of mm -hmm. driving that we do. Electrical vehicles will be great. And, and the kind of ve the vehicles Perfect. we have now are old. You know, they're 20-year-old vehicles. They need to be replaced. Anyway. Be replaced. The Postal Service has been starved over the last six years uh, by Congress. And uh, capital improvements, vehicle improvements have not been happening. It's, you know, this would be the, this would be the right time to transition to... The electric vehicle. And you said, uh, maybe you didn't say it, but it was said yesterday that there was a surplus to put aside of $40 billion because yeah. of this money that they have to put forward. Yeah, the pre-funding mandate over the last six years has built up to $42 billion, plus there's $80 billion uh, in, in the overfunded pensions. So there's all this surplus uh, that, that Congress has to, or the president, uh, could allow the Postal Service access to, but it doesn't. Which could be used to implement the computer labs and, the, all that. and some of the cars and all that. All that. Well, uh, since, since there is a move to privatize it, is it, that move also include the, the private corporations grabbing that money up? Yeah, is, well, that see, what's being, is that what's going on here? Yeah, what's, what's going on is that the, uh, the, probably the person calling the shots is James C. Miller III. Uh, he has uh, just been renominated for the Postal Board of Governors by President Obama. He was the privatization czar under, under Ronald Reagan. He was, uh, at one time, he was the chairman of the Postal Board of Governors. Uh, and he's been trying to privatize postal service for 30 years. He was, he's, he's an expert on contracting out government services and how to, how to make it happen, basically by, by, making, by driving government services into the ground and then convincing people that government's no good so mm -hmm. the private sector can do it better. And, um, this guy is on the on the uh, board of directors of the Americans for, for Prosperity, which is the Tea Party uh, out front mm -hmm. group, which is also has the Koch the, brothers. The Koch brothers, yeah. And, and the American Enterprise Institute, which is also the Koch brothers. So you know, he, this guy's hand in glove with the Koch brothers, and he's basically calling the shots for the Postmaster General, who is putting forward these drastic, disastrous plans to to close these plants and, and make the cuts uh, that will, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll destroy the Postal Service over time, but uh, it'll mm -hmm. destroy it. Um, Death of a thousand cuts. Death of a thousand cuts, yeah. yeah. So. And, and, and uh, the, the private sector has no interest in universal service. And the reason that the Postal Service is successful in, um, you know, it's profitable in the, in, the, in the downtown businesses and in the suburbs, but it's losing money in the, in the rural areas and the low-income neighbors. It's, it's because it's a universal, you know, everybody, everybody's in, nobody's out. The private sector, well, that's not what they'll do. You know, yeah. they'll just... They'll We're just, in, you're out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they, one quarter of the addresses in the country are not delivered by, you know, the rural areas are not delivered by UPS and FedEx. The, you know, mm -hmm. the UPS and FedEx trucks come to, come to my post office in inner northeast Portland every day and drop off packages for us, for the letter but carriers they to deliver. They can't deliver. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, profitable for them. Mm -hmm. They charge a, a, a much higher rate for, for package delivery than the Postal Service. They get that. They get that, and then they then they hand off the po the package to you the postal deliver, service, yeah. and they get the difference between what it costs oh, the postal yeah. service and what yeah. it costs and what nice they work, charge their customers. Nice work if you can get it. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, we're getting into the program here. I thought we should probably go into the next clip, and uh, then we'll come back and we'll put that phone number up again, so folks can. Uh, I hope hope we've inspired folks to get out there and uh, and uh, to call these people up or get a hold of some people you know that might be able to take advantage of a, of a speaker's bureau and, and get some of this information out there because if we if 
something isn't done, uh, like he was saying earlier, and he may not have mentioned yet on the air, but we'll talk about that, that these cuts are going to be starting this summer, and uh, it's a lot easier to start something, stop something before it gets started than it is once it gets rolling underway. And I w we'll go into the video here of a little bit of the, of the march and the actions that ensued after that, and then the arrest, and then we'll come back and then uh, discuss this some more. individually to the manager where you get to say your name if you want to identify yourself by organization that would be really great so he knows the breadth of the opinion about the public postal service and then you can say a few seconds worth of why you want to keep a fully funded public postal service and uh, if you can keep your remarks to about 20 seconds we'll all get a chance to deliver our postcards personally make a quick announcement. Um, as people are, are giving their postcards, please stay here because uh, it'll be worth staying. Um, all right, so we're not sure what's going to happen if these people refuse to leave because the post office should be closing right now and I think they are actually physically stopping the workers from being able to close down for the night. We've got some nice windows right here. Why don't we come around and show them support? I think they're going to be facing arrest here shortly. What's disgusting? Union busting. What's disgusting? Union busting. 
They say cut back, we say 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 We've got comrades in there taking a stand. Are we are we gonna stay here and support them and see this thing through? Are we gonna stand with them in solidarity to save our postal service? Yes! Are we going to let Alex have their greedy little way? No! What about Congress? Are we going to let them hear from us? Yes! Are we going to stand up for workers and yep. for good paying jobs? Yes! That's why it's happening. That's what we've got to stop. We see where it gets us. We're in the middle of a depression right now because entirely too much gambling was allowed to go on on Wall Street. You bet. And we're the ones who paid the price for it. So we're not going to destroy the post office along with everything else. No! Yeah. Another, another postal customer who loves the postal service. When I, I went to the letter carriers union a couple of weeks ago and I was just thinking back on how I felt about the postal service. And I thought about when I was a little kid in New York waiting for uh, birthday presents coming from my aunt in California. And probably all of us have stories where we are eagerly looking for the mail. We're looking for packages and, and letters. And, we, and we, we love the postal service. Also, just having a public person in the neighborhood is fabulous. Yeah. I mean, knowing that there's someone, I see my letter carrier every day, I say hi, and he knows what's going on in the neighborhood. I mean, imagine it if it was a UPS person coming around. It would have a different feel to it. It's great when it's public, when it's something that knits us together that is truly part of our commons. So that's a strong feeling that I think a lot of people have. Am I right? Yeah! yeah. Hey, uh, Folks, I mean, I'm just going to be very honest with you guys. I've seen some of you before. Uh, they have control of the building. You are subject to trespass, arrest, much like any other building out here, uh, if they don't want you in here. If you guys want to be out on the sidewalks, on, on the public sidewalk, and, and you do your stuff, that's fine. If you guys want to go march around the city, that's fine as well. But you are going to be subject to arrest inside the building. All right? And I know some of you guys raise your hands saying you're, you're willing to be arrested. However, I, I would rather not go down that road tonight. I've already got a bunch of stuff going on in the city that I don't need to be bringing people down here to make arrests. We've already had a couple of shootings in North Portland. We've got some other things going on East Precinct. I don't want to have to come down here and arrest you fine folks just because you want to get your message out there to a guy that's already in bed. You guys can call him tomorrow. At this point, I'm going to walk out. And I would hope that you guys all follow me out of here, because if I don't have people follow me out of here, I'm going to come back with my officers, and we're going to start making arrests. Picket lines are not okay? illegal. We will fight this evil. Picket lines are not illegal. We will fight this evil. Picket lines are not illegal. We will fight this evil. Picket lines are not illegal. We will fight this evil. People united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. We shall protest in the rain. Jordan, 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 George. Jack Herbert, Jack Herbert, Jack Herbert, Jack Herbert, Jack Herbert, Jamie, 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 Tim, 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 Tim. All right, we're back. I only had, you know, a little bit of time to put that together. I wish I had more time. I got a lot of good footage and managed to find some of it. Uh, there was more people arrested than that. Before we move on, I want to kind of give everybody kudos that uh, got themselves arrested. You know, some of the names were up there. Uh, Herbert, well, Would you like Jamie, to give me the, yeah, just kind of give, give the names of the folks okay. that were arrested because, you know, they took time out and stood there for a while. You all took time out and stood there and... I think maybe they, get, they should get their names out there. There were 10 of us. Um, Tim Flanagan, Trudy Cooper, Sarah Hobbs, Ann Huntwork, Dave King, 
Jordan McIntyre, John Schweibert, Michael Colvin, Jack Herbert, and myself, Jamie Partridge. Mm -hmm. And Ann Huntwork has been arrested, oh, I don't know how many times. I know she spent six months in jail because of the... Uh, the uh, School of the Americas a while back. So yeah. and uh, well, there were there were a number of people from the Peace House, the Metanoia uh, Peace Community. There was uh, um, Jordan's with the Painters Union. I'm a retired letter carrier. Um, <clears throat> Dave is with uh, Jobs with Justice. Um, yeah, I couldn't, Jim, Jim with the Alliance. The Alliance uh, and and Kabu. I yeah. couldn't find that clip because Chris Ferlazzo sp uh, gave credit to all the different organizations, and I mm -hmm. never did run across that clip. Uh, which, which you know, the names and, and the organizations, uh, it, it was it was really great to have that out there to let people know, and uh, I'm glad that we were able to do that. And as as you were talking about when we were when uh, we were waiting for the the clip to end, there was a couple of things that we hadn't brought up. And union busting, I think there was actually a clip there on that mentioned the union busting, and yeah. and that's a very large component of this when you start factoring in what's going on in the rest of the country. It isn't just the postal service. You know, it's it's the teachers, and especially in Wisconsin. And this is all part of the the machinations of a group called ALEC, right? Yeah. American Legislative Exchange Commission Council. Council. Mm -hmm. And so, what's that all about? Well, that's a uh, a cor creation of the corporations to put put forward their legislative agenda, and they've largely been done and doing it on a state by state ba basis. You mentioned Wisconsin, um, but one of one of the um, their Focus is, is on busting unions, particularly public employee unions, because uh, the the majority now of the unionized workforce is public employees. The private sector has been so decimated, you know, with outsourcing and automation, uh, and the public sector is still about 35 percent unionized. And about half of what it was in the 70s, I think, something like that, isn't it? Well, no, the the public sector has stayed oh, uh, has union, it? yeah, uh, and the private sector is, is what's been decimated. It's down. Private sector is down to something like six percent. Oh, I had them reversed there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so. Um, the Postal Service is the largest industry that's unionized, 400,000 union workers, you know, good pay, good, pay, uh, good benefits. And um, if, if, this, if this union, these unions can be busted and uh, the, the, the wages halved or, uh, you know, and the benefits taken away, um, it'll have a huge not impact. Not only it'll, it'll be uh, losing all that, losing good wage, Living wage jobs in communities has a huge impact on it all kinds of, right. you know, not yeah. only the, the, the individual workers and their families, but also the businesses, you know, that lose, you know, mm -hmm. that lose customers and all that. Um, but in terms of the, pol the political uh, scene, the uh, the unions are qu quite powerful politically uh, in local and and in the, na in the nation. Our uh, our postal worker unions are quite powerful on in uh, in capital on Capitol Hill, and we've always been able to mm -hmm. uh, preserve. The postal service in the past, but these attacks are, are very strong now, and uh, the uh, the one percent will 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 get a tremendous uh, boost in their political uh, and economic agenda if they can bust the the uh, postal mm -hmm. workers unions. Well, you know when they that uh, the Citizens United that allows unending money to go to to these political campaigns. There's only two groups that can really really. Uh, benefit from that and one is the corporations and the one on the other side would be the unions and mm -hmm. if the unions were were somehow decimated to the point where they didn't have the dues and they weren't able to to uh, provide any kind of any kind of uh, support for some of their candidates not that they have anywhere near the money as the no, corporations no they don't, the corporations but the, can outspend us right, 20 to but 1 but they're the only ones that have yeah. any 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 uh, power in that area at all right we, we usually spend the money uh, paying our own to go out and do the canvassing or do the do the phone banking or whatever mm -hmm. in the political arena, but the the um, the ability of of the the uh, ALEC, which is the American Legislative Exchange Council, to to undercut union in, in all kinds of uh, a thousand cuts in undercutting uh, mm -hmm. the ability of unions to represent uh, represent workers is is a lot about what this is about, and you can see that in the bills that are before Congress that are being. That uh, that the actual the uh, the postmaster general says that he supports HR 2309 would actually put a, a an unelected committee uh, in charge of the collective bargaining agreement and be able to change anything about about the collective bargaining agreement for the for mm -hmm. uh, for the union workers.
and um, that's you know that's basically the, that's an important part of this agenda. And the other the other piece is the contracting out is basically union busting. That is, as these post offices are are cut and closed, the retail function moves to what they call village post offices, which is basically you know Walmart. You move moved into the low wage non union sector and the non postal employee. Uh, and it ends up doing the postal functions. You know, it reminds me of what you were, we were talking about earlier, you know, the, the people at Walmart and those sort of places, you know, McDonald's, they don't work full time. And there was a woman at the post office there yesterday who worked there who has recently received some kind of paper that day and talking about what were you saying? They're cutting yeah. the wages to 30, 30 Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're moving, they're uh, shrinking the hours from 40 to 30 or from 40 to 37, or they've, 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 recon they've re, uh, defined all these jobs of the, of the, the uh, window clerks, that is the, the retail sector of the Postal Service. And what that, what that means is that all, all these people are like, how am I gonna support my family on 25% less wages? And there's a whole shuffling going on. Uh, and so it's hitting people right now. I mean, the, these changes are, are in process, in progress. And uh, yeah, it's, it, even the university station that we're talking about, uh, that we were there occupying the post office, is closing. And so the downtown businesses in the two, 9, 000, uh, 97201 zip code, when they have to go pick up a parcel or, or uh, you know, pick up a, a registered at a post office, they're going to have to go all the way to 23rd and Savior in Northwest. Oh boy, that traffic over there. I mean, yeah, I mean that's like just, how many? How far is that? A couple miles? Yeah. Uh, to the heart is, of this downtown. Is, this is going to this is going to drive business away. They're mm -hmm. going to start using private couriers, you know, and it's all it's all part of this. Uh, whether whether they admit it or not, it's it's decisions that are being made that are that are destroying the postal service and driving business away. Well, we got about seven minutes left, and want to get that phone number up if anybody wants to call in. Uh, there's so much to talk about here. I really really wanted to get Alec up on there because mm -hmm. it, you know I read somewhere on the news a while back that the city managers and, and you know that familiar with what sure. that's about the city managers in some places are able to just do whatever they want. That's got to come from Alec, I would think. Yeah, the, what they do is they create a, a financial crisis in these government bodies and these government agencies. And in in uh, in Wisconsin and Michigan, I believe, it, and, and for Michigan and for sure, they they have a law now that Alex has managed to pass through that any uh, city that goes into bankruptcy or financial emergency, the uh, governor or whoever can appoint a city manager to basically run the city and and, and uh, eliminate, you know the city councilors don't have anything to say and this mm -hmm. is this is what the what Alex's bill in in the US Congress about the postal service says that as soon as the postal service defaults is unable to pay its debt then then the collective bargaining agreements go out the window and an unelected you know mm -hmm. body gets to run the show not only unelected but specifically appointed to do that yeah of course yeah, I think we got a call we'll get the first caller on the air Hello, first caller. Hi, this is Patty Olson. Hello, Patty Olson. Welcome to the program. <laughs> Jamie, I wanted to thank you for all your hard work and putting yourself on the line there last night and the rest of you, and to thank Occupy Portland and Jobs with Justice and everybody who came out. I know that the window clerks and postal clerks really appreciate all the hard work and effort you put in and um, I just wanted to say thanks. All right, well, thank you for the call. Thanks, Patty. You know, um, we're, really, we're really in a situation where we have to step up the level of fight back uh, against these against these closures and cuts. It's we've had rallies, we've had uh, marches, we've petitioned. We we collected a million signatures on a petition to Congress. Uh, Congress is stuck on stupid. I mean, they, we've got a, a bill in Congress that would fix the finances that has 226 sponsors. It's it's a it's got a majority co-sponsors, 26 Republicans, but it's being held in committee by by the by the House leadership. It, mm -hmm. It's not can't even get onto the floor. So we have to we have to start disrupting business as usual. We have to start doing the kinds of things that we did last night, occupying the post office. I've been getting calls from all over the country, people saying, "Wow, how did you do it?" 
<laughs> you know, um, you know, not only workers but people in the community are, are really concerned that we've got to capture the spirit, the spirit of Occupy, the spirit, the spirit of the 1970 uh, Wildcat strike. I mean, in 1970, postal workers not only risked their jobs; it's illegal to strike, but they risked being thrown in jail because it's a felony to, mm -hmm. to for a, for a federal worker to strike. And they they shut down the post office for five days, and they completely changed the kind of uh, wages and benefits the postal workers get. I mean, they, they were, they were uh, getting poverty wages such they were eligible for food stamps in 1970. But there was a wildcat strike against the, against the wishes of their union leaders, you know, and, and President Nixon, Nixon called in 25,000 National Guard to try to move the mail <laughs> unsuccessfully. Uh, but, uh, th you know, this, is, this was a time when there was a huge upheaval, too. The 1970, you know, the anti-war movement, the Black Power movement, you know, there was public employees going on strike mm -hmm. illegally. Well, we might be in a, in a similar time, you know, where, uh, and people are desperate, sure. people are losing their jobs. And, uh, well, like the chant says, stand up, fight back. Yeah. The you know, Occupy movement to, is is here, so maybe back. maybe the people will catch the spirit of 1970 mm -hmm. and of the Occupy movement. I hope so. Well, we got time for one more call. The next next caller, you're on the air. Is that me? That's you. You're on the air. Well, thank you very much for the information. When I first heard of this a few years back, I had some idea that it had to be some kind of privatization and union busting. And you've answered a lot of my questions tonight. Uh, I'll take this off the air, but could you tell me who it is that I can call to do the most good? And thanks for all that you're doing. All right. I was going to ask this to put that uh, phone number up, and the guy just read my mind. So we'll put that phone number up, and you can tell what it's about there again. Sure. Uh, is he going to put the phone number yeah, up? Yeah, he's working on it right oh, okay. now. There we all go. Right. There you go. So these... these um, the websites are the our national websites. SaveThePostOffice.com has the best information about about current bills before Congress, how to how to fight back on a local level. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to save your local post office or save your local plant, uh, and the different campaigns that are going on. Uh, CPWUnited.com is the Communities and Postal Workers United, uh, which is uh, a network that I'm part of that is trying to, to raise the level of struggle, and it, it um, that's a website. And then this local contact contact is, is our local union, the Letter Carriers Union, and we have a Speakers Bureau and we want to come out and talk uh, to your group and we want, uh, certainly we want people to be contact, contacting Congress, but we also people want, want people to contact the Postmaster General and tell him to, to stop these closures and cuts, but also to, to um, insist with your congressional representatives that they not vote for anything, you know, which will, which will move forward this agenda of closures and cuts. The post office is not broke, it's not necessary. Uh, to these, these, cuts and, these cuts and closures are absolutely not necessary. So in, in Oregon, uh, so far, there's only one congressional member who is dead set against what we're trying to do, and that's Greg Walden out in, out in east, Big surprise uh, east, there, huh? eastern, He's central, and southern Oregon. Yeah. So if you have any relatives or friends that live in, live in eastern, central, or southern Oregon, uh, they should contact uh, Greg Walden and tell him to get on board. No closures, no cuts. Save Saturday delivery, save door-to-door -door delivery, um, save good living wage jobs. Save some, a very important part of the community. We're down to about 40 seconds here. The show's over. Uh, thank you for, the sh for coming on the program, Jamie. And uh, I hope to be out there and videotape some of these actions in the future, and we'll talk about this more and more. We got the phone number was up there, so folks can uh, call up and... Uh, Try to lend a little help to this. The main thing is, you know, shine a light on it. That's the main thing we have to do is just shine a light on things. And, and if people know what's really going on, I think that they will make the right decision and, and they'll, uh, they'll uh, pitch in and help. So we'll be back next week. We mentioned Walmart. We're going to talk a little bit about Walmart next week. Uh, they're trying to Walmart the, the, uh, the community here. So we'll be back next week.